A while ago we talked about being efficient with Affinity Designer and one of the ways was to learn shortcuts. However, most of the common shortcuts are really easy to figure out. So today let's talk about nine very helpful shortcuts that you're probably not using. All right, let's start off with this first shortcut, which I'm gonna call special pasting. So everyone knows the copy and paste shortcuts, which is control C and then control V. So in this case, if we copy this circle here, hit control C and then hit control and V, we have a identical copy of what we were copying. Alternatively, in an affinity designer, you can actually use control and J to duplicate something anyway, which is a little bit easier instead of copying and pasting. But anyway, what this is, this is special pasting. So say if we have this circle here and we want to copy parts of this circle onto this new circle. So if we press control and C to copy this one, if we now select this circle and press control shift and V, we'll copy all the attributes over which includes the style the effects the color everything so say for example instead of it being a circle we made a rectangle we could hit Control shift and v and it would have the exact same attributes as the circle so what you're actually doing is pasting the style the effects and the colors all over all at once without actually pasting the object itself. But with this, what we also have, if we copy this one again, is we have Alt, Shift, and V. Now in this case, you can see that it's pasted over the effects, but not the colors. So here we're literally just pasting the effects. So again, if we had something which was a different shape entirely, and I'm using these regular shapes just to make it easier, we could color this however we like, and then think, oh, we like the effects of this circle, so let's copy that over. So if we hit Control and C, click onto this one, Alt, Shift, and V, just to paste the effects, we can keep the color the same but we end up adding the effects on top or if we want the color over as well and we didn't actually like this blue control shift and v and that would add the color as well as the effects on top so special pasting it's very helpful all right next up we got a really cool one which i wish i knew a lot earlier and it's a pretty quick one as well so say for example we have these shapes and what we want to do is start a new document with this shape now in the past what i would do is open a new document create the canvas size that i want copy this over paste it across instead in affinity designer what you can do is select the object that you have hit Control and C to copy it and instead now hit Control shift alt and n and we have that exact circle in a new document which you can see is labeled untitled but the old one has remained exactly where it was so now what we can do is we can export this separately if we want to we can make changes that we want to here or if someone wants this specific object we can now send this off to them without having to deal with the rest of the information on the screen and again if I want to do it again copy this one hit Control alt shift and n and we've got that and also the artboard is sized perfectly for that object. So you can see here that the artboard is rectangular and fits the object perfectly. And then here we've got a square one to fit the circle properly. It's really helpful to move an object to its own document if you wanna save it separately. Okay, next up we've got move layers inside. We've got our same shapes here, except I've overlapped them to kind of prove my point. In the layers panel on the right here, we've got the rectangle on top of everything. So say if we wanted to move this rectangle within this circle, we could drag this rectangle and move it underneath, highlighting the name. So the blue bar is more indented inwards. And you can see on the screen there, it previews what it's actually gonna look like and let go and put it within that object. Alternatively, what we can do is selecting the rectangle, hit Control, Alt and G, and it'll do the exact same thing. So rather than having to move layers across, you can actually just do it with that shortcut. Now, a key thing to remember is that it will only move it directly into the layer that's underneath. All right, next up, we've got the shortcut for locking layers. Now, the easiest way to lock a layer, and if you don't know what locking a layer is, it is that it literally locks a layer from moving. So if we wanted to lock this circle here, we could head up all the way over to the layers panel here, click this little padlock, and you'll see the little padlock up here next to the layer, meaning that layer is now locked. You can't grab and move and do anything to that until you unlock it by clicking the lock. Sometimes getting to that can be a little bit annoying. It's just a little bit tedious. Alternatively, you could use a shortcut, which is Control and L. You can see the lock has just appeared here. To unlock something, you can use Control, Shift, and L. Sometimes I find with this specific shortcut is having my hand over on the right-hand side of the keyboard. So using that Control and Shift on the right-hand side of the keyboard makes it a lot easier because your pinky can just about reach the L. But if you want to quickly just click on something and think, you know what, I need to quickly lock that. I want to grab this thing in here. I want to move this around, quickly lock that in place, and then do what I need to do without actually then editing anything again. Control and L is very handy 
to put things into place, especially once you've moved them and you know that's where you want to put them. Next up, we've got the shortcut for convert to curves. Selecting any object, especially if it's one of these pre-made objects, right at the top here, you've got convert to curves, which once you've made the object, you could easily just head up here and click that. And now this object is editable in a way that it's got points around it. But moving up to that does use mouse movement and arm movement, and we want to do things quicker, hence the efficiency side of things of learning shortcuts. So instead, did you know that you could just hit control Control, enter and it will convert it to curves and now we can do the same thing so again something really quick that you can do if we want to quickly grab this convert it to curves and then move it around then maybe grab this one convert it to curve So control and enter to quickly convert something into a curve all right we're blazing through this i think we're up to like number six so sometimes the whole user interface of affinity designer can get a little bit in the way sometimes you just want to see what you're working on a really good shortcut to hide most things is control shift and h and what this does is it gets rid of all the panels that you had open but it keeps the toolbar and the bar at the top in case you want to do anything extra and you can use Control, shift and h to bring everything back but it means instead of having this small canvas to work on i can now hide all those panels so i've got a little bit more room alternatively if you want to get rid of completely everything if you hit tab you'll get rid of the toolbars as well as all the panels if you really want to maximize your space tab will get rid of everything including your toolbars and control shift and h will get rid of all your panels but you can see you've still got your toolbar available if you want to add anything extra so sometimes just having that extra breathing room can be really helpful all right next up we've got the shortcut for selecting an overlapping object now you might come across this in something a bit more intricate than a bunch of circles stacked on top of each other but using this as an example we have a bunch of circles stacked on top of each other now selecting which circle i want can be quite difficult especially if i don't want to move any of this I uh, yes I could go into this layers panel and select which one I want however if you've got multiple layers and you've got a very intricate design you may not want to search through the layer panel to find what you want to click on instead what you can do is rather than clicking is if you hold alt and click and you can see in the layer panel there is that as I click you'll see I'm cycling through selecting all the objects that are overlapping now if I move one of these circles out so it's not overlapping where I'm clicking and now if I cycle through them you'll see that it'll miss one of them and that's the one that's not overlapping. But if you know you've got something underneath something, rather than finding it through all the layers, especially if you had everything on exactly on top of each other, or say, for example, I wanted to stack all these circles on top of each other, I could grab this one, move it across so it fits the purple one above. I could alt click, grab the next one, move it so it's on top of the circle, alt click, grab them again, alt click, grab it again. So just keep alt clicking, finding the ones that I want. And then now I've got them all stacked together and you won't even know that they're there. So using alt click, you can actually select what's underneath and you'll continue cycling until you go back to where you started. All right, next up on our shortcut list, which I think is number eight, we've got show typography. So say if you're really big into your text or you spend a lot of time editing text or doing things with text, this can be really helpful. So if you have some text or a text frame and you select it and you hit the shortcut, control, shift and T, this box pops up and it's your typography box. Now in this, you can select different things to make changes to your text. We can change it to all caps. We can change it to small caps. We can change to all small caps. There's a lot of different things that you can use to edit the typography. And what's great is that this window now stays open. So if I click onto different text or if I click onto nothing, then it stays around and I can then just click on my text again, make any changes. So even when you close this, you can use Control Shift and T to bring it back open. But also you've got Control and T to bring out the character menu. Now I've got it docked over here, but say if I didn't have this open and hit Control and T, character window opens, I can make my changes and close it again. If I need it again, I can keep it open. I can dock it if I want to. The difference between this character panel and this typography panel is that this can't be docked. So your typography panel, you can't actually fit anywhere on the screen. Whereas your character panel does dock. So I can leave it there now. But your typography, you'll close. And then when you need it again, Control, Shift and T will bring it back up. But what's also great is that I've got my character panel docked here. If I didn't have it selected, Let's say I was on the asset panel. If I hit control and T, it'll open up the character panel and leave it where it is. So if you want to quickly access something, even though you already know it's docked, you can just hit that shortcut and you've got it open.
All right, and the last one for today is number nine, which is clip to canvas. Now we're currently in a document without an artboard and you can see it in the layer panel there that there isn't any artboards compared to this one that has an artboard available. You might remember in the video that I've linked at the top about all about artboards if you want to find out more. I did say when you have something in a document that doesn't have an artboard, when you move that object outside, it disappears and you can lose track of where it is, especially if you click off of it. And the only way to click back onto it is to know exactly where it is or to use a layer panel on the side. However, that's not completely true. What you can actually do if you're ever in this situation and you don't have an artboard, instead of opening an artboard, you can just hit the forward slash button, in which case everything will pop up that you've not got on the canvas. And again, you can hit the forward slash button to hide everything again if you don't want it around. But actually, this does make it very similar to having an artboard. So you can toggle everything on, move it around, do what you need to do, grab this one, turn them all off, do what you need to do, turn them on, grab another one. So you can actually utilize the outside of your canvas, even without an artboard, just by using that shortcut. If you want to know, if you head over to view and view mode, you can see clip to canvas is available there and you can see the forward slash is the shortcut. Right now we're in a document that doesn't have an artboard. When you have an artboard, which this one does, if you head over to view, view mode, you'll see that clip to canvas isn't selectable. And that's because right now we can also already put things outside of your artboard. Whereas when you have just a canvas, you can hit forward slash and you can actually reveal everything that's outside your canvas and you can actually hide it again. So that's actually very helpful. But all these shortcuts can be found on Serif's website, which is in the description below. But you also have the ability to see them in the preferences panel. So if we head over to edit, and down to preferences and head over to keyboard shortcuts, we have literally every shortcut or every different type of thing listed in here. And you can actually change them to something that's a bit more usable for yourself. So if you don't like something, for example, if you didn't like new layer as control alt and N, you could change that to something you personally like and keep it as that. So the idea is to make your shortcuts something that makes things easier for your workflow. You can actually tailor the software to make it easier for yourself to use. So that's the list. Let me know in the comments if you knew any of these ones and if you've got any shortcuts of your own that you use a lot drop them in the comments below as well if you found the video useful make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new for more videos like this if you want to know any more tips and tricks about affinity designer make sure you check out this video here all the social links are in the description below if you want to follow me on anything but as always i've been brown bear thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one